Hi everyone, I'm back again with another update on my Blue Yeti system. So you might recall from my previous videos I had an EB200P uh, that was working quite well. I even was working running it with the expanded uh, B230 battery. But alas, the, uh, the EB200P developed a fault on the touchscreen and it had to go back to Blue Yeti. I didn't have any more of those in stock, so I paid the extra and upgraded to the AC Max. Uh, I thought it was a prudent move, especially considering I had the B230 already. And I must say, overall, I am actually you know, very impressed with uh, with this system. It is a lot easier, and I think for the, the difference I paid, which was only $300 difference, uh, definitely well worth the additional features. So what do we get for that extra $300? We get the upgraded 500 watt Blue Yeti charging power brick. It's actually uh, got fans in this one, whereas the other one that comes with the lower spec models is actually a, a passive uh, sort of heat sink, whereas this one's got a, a fan in it. So I haven't really had to use the, the power brick yet because I run entirely off solar and I'm completely off grid here. So you get the 500 watt brick, And obviously you get one of the big features of the AC Max is the integrated expansion ports. So I've got one of my batteries connected here, which is the B230. I am going to get myself another one to connect up to the second port over here. Uh, and of course you get the app as well. And uh, I might stitch a, a piece of the, uh, some footage of the app in here. But. Uh, we're fully charged at the moment. Uh, we've uh, been enjoying brilliant sunshine today. Um, you probably remember from my uh, previous video, if you watched it with the expanded, expanded battery into the EB200P, it's quite a manual process to charge that up, particularly because I didn't want to just push power from one battery to another. I wanted to actually charge. I uh, don't need to do any of that now. It's all seamless um, through the integration. So I've got the two solar arrays coming in. I've got the primary, which is about 1600 watts coming into the uh, PV input of the AC Max, uh, over paneled it obviously. Uh, and then I've got another array, which is about a thousand watts. Uh, they're older secondhand panels. And I've got that coming through on the enhanced uh, DC charger here. So those two uh, inputs charge up the Blue Eddy quite Quickly. You probably remember if you've seen my other videos though on the secondary array it is favouring more the western sun um, so it'll pick up more in the afternoon. And I've got two external meters over here which provide me with uh, current power input but more importantly they provide me with a cumulative total for power generation. I'll take you downstairs and just show, the, show you the panels again because I've actually got a bit of a unique problem um, which is um, unique to this, uh, this location and I'll show you what I've done to resolve it. Okay, so I used to have one half of my primary solar array here against the house. But as you can probably see, I'm getting quite a bit of shade there now. And you can see on this other um, secondary array here that the top half is shaded. And that's basically because we're on the Tropic of Capricorn and we're coming towards the summer solstice, which means that the sun is going to be directly overhead during uh, the next couple of months, particularly at midday. But it meant that my second panels here weren't really generating very much. They were half in shade. Uh, and that's obviously a feature just of the fact that we're on the Tropic of Capricorn here. So I've had to move them. And because the sun is directly overhead, I don't really need a lot of angle here for them, so I've just laid them out on the ground here. And uh, once again, we are producing full power again. So I've got these two here, and I've got another two of them at the front, which are on a, on a stand and a bit of an angle. And that gives me a total of uh, 1600 watts uh, on, on the primary input to the Blue Yeti Max. These are JA 390 watt um, panels, and as I said, I've got four of them. So two here in series, two out the front in series, and then those are then connected in parallel. So 
So this is the other half of the primary array. These are the other two 390 watt panels. These get quite a good amount of sun in the morning. So for the last week or so, I've really been mostly drawing off these because the other two were pretty much in the shade throughout most of the day, just because the sun's directly overhead and they're under the shade of the eave of the house. Just to remind for those, what I've done here, just got it on some painting trestles, got a ground anchor and some tie down straps just to make sure that the whole thing can't really go anywhere in a storm. And the other array is here. This is the western facing array. These are two 260 watt panels. And they are, these are in series and they're in parallel with the other two, which are partially in shade now. But uh, the idea is just for these to produce in the afternoon. We get quite a lot of western sun here. So uh, yeah, these can produce easily 450 to 500 watts into the enhanced DC charger, which is, extends my uh, my runtime throughout the afternoon. So what I've actually also done here is I've got a, a feed that comes down from um, the Blue Yeti up in uh, up in my room study above, it comes down to here. Actually, this is the cable here at the moment. I'm using it to power another part of the house. I've got it running out to the lounge room and um, uh, powers the uh, the modem and some stuff in the lounge room. But uh, if there was a, a power outage for any reason, I've got an ATS, or not an ATS, it's a TS, a transfer switch, it's not an automatic one, that uh, allows me to inject the Blue Yeti's output via this um, 15 amp connector here, and then I can change over the transfer switch up here and, uh, and power the entire board off the Blue Yeti. Now I realize it won't power the entire house. That's not the goal. Uh, the, main, the main point of it was really just to be able to run lights or a fridge or something like that uh, without having to um, run a whole bunch of extension leads. The reason I went with a 15 amp uh, here is if I do decide in the future to go up to an AC 300 or an AC 500 I can put the extra current into the board but I've also got a, a Dewalt uh, generator and that's got a 15 amp output on it so uh, so I've got another extension lead here which I can use if I need to to, uh, to use a generator instead of the Blue Eddy. So potentially the idea being use the generator during the day if we have an emergency for some reason. Uh, it allows the Blue Eddy to charge up during the day and then we can swap them over at night and, and run the house that way. So having a high set home makes things easy. I can take the solar up and then bring the mains back and that's exactly what I've done here. Okay, so that's the, the bit of an overview of the system. Definitely impressed with the AC Max. I'm very pleased with it. Uh, you can see down here our meters have picked up. So our secondary array is pulling 350. Now, I posted another uh, video on this. And I don't understand why it does this, but see how the primary is stopped. The PV is stopped, but it's still pulling power from the grid. Now, in this case, the grid input is also solar. And they basically just shut down. But yeah, what I've seen it do, and other people have commented on this, is when it gets to about 99% on either battery, it'll actually start to either turn off the PV input or throttle it back. But it allows the grid input to continue uh, until it reaches 100% and then obviously they both shut down. So uh, it's just an unusual feature the AC Max has. Others have commented on it. I'm not quite sure why. It does this, um, but uh, but it does. I guess if you didn't have a grid connection or another solar on the grid, it would probably still just use the the PV input to um, to fully charge up to a hundred percent. But when you have them both connected, it seems to favour the grid input um, towards the end of its charging cycle. So uh, just a little idiosyncrasy there. Not not an issue. I think it's meant to do that. I just was curious as to the reason as to why. Anywho, look, really impressed with uh, with the Blue Yeti AC Max. Highly recommend. And if you are umming and ahhing between an EB200P and an AC Max, you can get them on the right price, I would encourage you to go for the AC Max. Even if you're not planning to expand batteries at this point in time, you just never know what you might do in the future. And the price point between the two units is, is narrow enough and close enough that for the extra features you get, uh, I think it's well worth it. Um, you also get the extra warranty. That's another really important feature to mention. The AC Max has got the additional two years 
as to as does the B two thirty. Um, so I think you when you weigh it up, you get the five hundred watt power brick, you get the integrated expansion ports, you get the uh, Bluetooth app, and you get the extra two years warranty. So when you think about all those extras you get with the Max, uh, I think it uh, it definitely stacks up against the others. Uh, and that's probably why it's one of their best sellers here in Australia. So, uh, well, look, I hope you're enjoying your systems. Thanks for listening. Cheers.